Today, we're taking a look at a WordPress funnel builder called WP Funnels. It's promising us a much better funnel building experience. So let's check it out and see if there are any changes in WP Funnels 3.0. So for this to work, it needs a WooCommerce. So let's go ahead and create a few products. Now I've already gone ahead and created two products. So let me show you quickly how to add one. So you wanna scroll over here to products and then click on add new. So let's call this product C. We're gonna give this a price. So let's say this is about $14. Now, let's go ahead and start creating our funnels. So the first thing you wanna do here is to go to your settings because this is where you want to specify what page builder you want to use with this. All right, so over here, just go ahead and choose one. So in this case, I'm gonna go with Divi, but there's options for Gutenberg and Elementor. So now let's head over to funnels because this is where all the changes are. So uh, let's start by creating our first funnel. I'm gonna click here on this plus button. And we can see here, there's uh, quite a few options for us, which I think is very good because this left panel here was not there before. So you can use this to drill down and find uh, your templates in specific categories. Now, some of these don't have any, but I'm pretty sure that they are going to be working on these areas here. But anyways, let's just go to all. So this is all we have. We can either start from scratch or we can use these existing ones. But I want to start from scratch so, so that we can see the whole process. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. So I'm going to call this uh, Mac Funnel and create. So, so far the UI is quite clean, but uh, I think we are going to see more in the next page. So you notice quickly that this has collapsed on the left here, giving us more screen real estate. I think that's, good. that's a good thing too. Now let's click on this plus button. So now it's asking us to create the landing page. So you can see that by this one here being highlighted. So anyway, that's good. Now what I've noticed here as well is the thank you, the upsell and the downsell are all grayed out. So this means that we can't start off with an upsell, a thank you page or a downsell, so we, which is very good as well. So let's click here on this plus button. So I'm gonna call this um, landing and then create. All right, so again, the canvas here looks beautiful. I can move things around like this. But what I've noticed here is there's very little text and quite a lot of icons. So we are going to uh, drill into that. Okay, so let's click here on this plus button. So let's say this time I want to add a checkout page. I can just go in here. In fact, it's already highlighted for us and this one here has been um, grayed out, which means I can't go back and create another landing page. So I like the experience so far. This is quite good. Next, I'm gonna click on start from scratch and I'm gonna call this checkout. Now let's see what happens here. Okay, now we have our checkout stage. Brilliant. So how do we add our products? That's the main question because that's what you want to do here. So let's click here on this gear icon. And now we can see that we have this option here for entering all our products. So all I have to do now is to search for it. So I know I have product A, product B and product C. So let's go ahead and add that. Just type in a few letters and now we have all our products. So I'm going to put product A, click on add product and hit on update. Okay, great. So now it has been updated. That's great. Let's see now how easy it is to add an upsell. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and sure enough, you can see here that this is what is highlighted, which is fantastic. I like this. So let's click on uh, build from scratch and I'm going to say upsell. So in this case, our upsell is the product B. So do you see how important it is to create the products first? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on this gear icon and this is going to allow us to search for our product. So this is gonna be product B, product, and then update. Save changes, and then we're gonna close out of here. So I think so far we can see that it's very easy to go in and add all our steps. And for those steps that we can't really access, they're all grayed out, enabling us to follow a streamlined workflow. That is very good. So I like this update so far. Now let's take a look and see what happens with these icons. Now we already clicked, uh, clicked on this gear icon, which is the one we use to uh, go in and customize. So for example, on the checkout page, this one here is what we use to go in and add our products. But on the landing page, notice what happens. If I click on here, all we can do is to go in and change or update the title. Now. On this pencil icon here, this is what we can use to go in and design our page. And again, I really like this. If I click here, it opens up in a new tab and this is where I would go into our page builder and start working on our design. You can see here, we're ready to use Divi. 
All right, so let's go back and let's, take, let's explore other options. This one here, this is the eye icon. I can just use this to view my landing page. But what's interesting here, we also have this A-B testing tool. And I really like the way it's been set up. So if I click here, you notice that it's going to give us a new interface. So I can click on this plus button and the quickest way to do this is to duplicate it. And once you've duplicated it, you can now go in and customize this one by clicking on the pencil icon. So let's say on this one here, you want to have a video, but on the other one, you want text only, and you want to test and see which one is performing better. This is how you would do it. Now, here's the thing. We also have our own settings here. If I go to, if I go to traffic distribution, this is where you want to decide how you want to distribute the traffic. So 50-50 will be a very good idea. I'm going to click on save and then close out of here. Now you can add another variant here and you can also have a look at the stats. Now this is giving you stats for the first landing page and the second landing page to see which one is okay. Now if you decide this one here is uh, performing better, you can just click here on declare as winner and pretty much you're good to go. Now if you want to get this A-B testing started, all you have to click is on the start. The other thing that I also noticed on the UI here is you can click on this back arrows here. This will take you back to where you want to be. So again, it's very, very easy to use. All right, so let me click on this black back again <laughs> to take us back over here. All right, so now that we have this, also may want to add some logic. And to add logic, you can click on this little icon here. This is the conditions. So you can say for my upsell, let's enable this. So you can say for upsell is accepted, then you know, you choose your option here, or you can start off by saying not accepted, but I'm gonna leave it as it is here. And then, so as you can see, we can build complex funnel steps here. Now there's more to this. If I come over here to the top right, there's also other things we can see. There's also a webhook. We also have analytics. So if you wanna see what, how your funnel is performing, this is where you would come. You can see here we have the gross sales. We have the average order value. We scroll down here. We have all these other options here that we can see, which is brilliant. And again, it has a nice big view, which has no distraction. Okay, now let's move back. Now again, you're going to notice that I'm using this back arrow. So if I click back, Back over here we also have things like our uh, integrations so of course if you're running a funnel you want to uh, integrate it with other software in this case it's integrated with fluent CRM which is an email automating system of course this is a fantastic thing because here if you click on this drop down you can see we have fluent CRM so we can now decide when an event happens so we can say uh, call to action landing if someone lands in, what do we do? Add them to the list, assign a tag. You can do this all, I mean, all here. Now, here's the thing. WP Funnels also has MailMint. So this is their version of your email automation system. So over here, if we click on this plus button, again, it's very, very easy to use. You can click here on select start point. So call to action triggered. If I click here on this plus button, now I can say send email. Now, all this is using MailMint. So the integration of... WP Funnels and MailMint is pretty cool. I mean, I like the way uh, this is looking. So overall, I would say that the funnel building experience is definitely really good. I mean, it's focused on really the visual and there is not too much text on there, but you really have to master what these icons do. Now, once you just go into these icons, it's very easy to learn how it works. So I would say they've done a very good job for from... Um, WP Funnels 2.0 to 3.0. So I highly recommend it. I also have a link in the video description below. Check it out and start building your funnels. I will be making more tutorials on how to create funnels and also how I've tested this with some of my products. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.